Willkommen zurück. Welcome back. And I, of course, mean all of you here in the room and all of you in front of your screens that follow us via live stream. I hope that many of you had an interesting exchange during the break. I, until a few seconds ago, had the feeling there was a lot of debate. And maybe a few of you even debated the questions that we put on the small leaflets uh, on your tables. This is what I would do, like to do with my dear colleague Samira Amos right now. Samira works for the Swiss program of BioVision and it's her task to look at enterprises, initiatives, projects that really live a sustainable food production. Please welcome Samira Amos. Hi, Samira. Hi, Sharon. It's great to have you. Thank you for the cordial welcome. I can see it's time for the third course. What are you going to serve? Of course, you're spot on. It's time for the third course, and I can see my colleagues who are already distributing it. The third course is bread balls. This is our contribution to the fight against food waste for both the bread and the veggies in the bread balls were saved, i.e. they wouldn't have been used otherwise. And right now, I have to tell you allergy information because the bread has been saved. We used what we had and it might contain nuts or sesame. I hope that is not a problem for you, and I hope that you enjoy your food. But now to you, Samira. I am really curious to hear about your recipes for the future and have a first question. What for you personally is sustainable food? Many or a lot of black salsify. Uh, winter asparagus is what we also call that. We in the shared accommodation I live in have a veggie subscription from a nearby farm, which is why I eat lots of roots and cabbage during the winter. It's a journey of discovery for me because before I have to admit that I mainly ate zucchini and tomatoes even in, during the winter. So one of your recipes for the future is seasonal is a seasonal veggie subscription yes indeed i like to try out new things especially if they come from innovative businesses to try out new things so the farm that delivers your subscription is right down your alley are you alone or do you know other examples for sustainable food businesses if I'm completely honest, I have to admit it, before I started working here, I would only have been able to mention a few companies that really impressed me. That's not because they don't exist, but because we don't talk uh, about them enough. In the meantime, I can name hundreds of them. That's impressive. Yes, it's due to our project that uh, collects sh inspiring showcases. We want to give them a stage. In the last year, we collected numerous businesses and documented 20 of them that were especially fascinating for us. That's great. Uh, how does it work? Our inspiring showcases are really diverse. I want to show a few examples. You can see on the screen, Manny and Samuel from uh, their, on their farm in the Quintal Valley. They plant 50 different varieties of herbs and vegetables. That's impressive enough already, but on top of that, they do that 1,000 meters above sea level, where normally you'd only see cows grazing. They bring more diversity into Swiss mountains and test out which varieties grow in that climate. 
This is an organic farm, the Klauser family farm that you can see on the slide right now. They produce hens or uh, that both lay eggs and also put on meat. So you can use them for both fried eggs and as a soup hen. And uh, in conventional farms, this isn't possible with their high yield varieties. And the Glauser family also features Angelo on the picture on the right, it, or on the left, rather. It's a, it's a um, livestock guardian alpaca. However, we don't only cooperate with farms, also with uh, businesses in food processing, education, for example. One example is Fudu. They save up to two tons of food a day that would be thrown away otherwise. So there's a big diversity and one common theme. It's they work for a sustainable world. Um, they are really very committed. Thank you for that insight. These are three very different examples. How do we know that they contribute to a sustainable food system? We tested these um, businesses. We had certain criteria, environmental protection criteria, for example. They recycle waste, for example. But we also had social and economic criteria. For example, fair prices are being paid and that uh, people who work in the fields can participate in the uh, in decisions. Yeah. So participation is, plays an important role. It is really important to emphasize that it's not just businesses that we thought were great. There are all businesses that are working in a very holistic way. They look after the soil, after life, after human beings. And these are really important and vital points. We need our soil. We need all these factors, but very often they are neglected. This makes a lot of sense, and I wonder why doesn't everybody work this way? That's a very good question, Sharon. Many of our inspiring showcases work very well, but I'd lie if I said that there are no challenges. These challenges are very diverse and complex. I'll just talk about two of them. First, uh, in, this, uh, in the back, you can see Ramp 5. Ramp 5, it's a participative uh, food cooperative. It's a complicated word, which basically works in the following way. The consumers participate financially in the shop and thus have access to a sustainable local products. Ramp Ramp 5, Ramp 5 needs active um, participants, but has finds it difficult to find enough people who want to do that or participate. I'm sure that everybody in this room is completely enthusiastic about sustainable food, but in everyday life, the topic is often forgotten. In order to make it more prominent in everyday life, we have two awareness raising projects. Clever is one of them. However, it's not only the consumers that are responsible. And I'd like to illustrate that with a second example. The Lenz family produces wine in polyculture. They plant their wines between vegetables or trees. This is very good for the soil. However, if they plant too many trees, then officially it, their area is no longer a vineyard, which has an impact on direct payments. And by this, I'd like to say that the political framework in Switzerland is not adapted to new forms of agriculture. So this means that in Switzerland, political um, framework conditions are a barrier as well. Yes, absolutely. And this is what we want to tackle. We want to change the framework conditions uh, in order to make uh, inspiring showcases easier. 
next year, for example, we are going to do a study in order to better understand the challenges they, these projects face. That's really great. So you're making progress. Thank you, Samira. Um, in the end, I'd uh, like to know your favorite sustainable food. It's French toast. Wow, that's perfect. Thank you. The audience, that was Samira Amos. You've just heard it. Uh, things are moving in Switzerland as well. Business as usual is not an option. And there is one person that has repeated that very sentence over and over, and he's right to do so. Our founder, co-founder, Hans Rudolf. Swiss-born Hans Rudolf Herren. Our 1995 recipient of the World Food Prize. Hans Rudolf Herren hat während 26 Jahren in Afrika gelebt. And earned him a nickname. Eco-freak, the tsetse fly became resistant to the pesticide and kept coming A biological back. control program of this magnitude had never before been attempted, but Dr. Herren remained undaunted. So we knew we had a good solution. It just had to be translated in, into, into a, a program which can cover a whole continent. Welcome on the floor, Hans Rudolf Herren. Willkommen, Hans. Danke, Sharon. Schön, bist du da. <laughs> welcome, Hans. It's wonderful to have you here. Yes, I would like to welcome you all. I'm so happy that so many of you have come back. And many of you have already been here 24 times at least. And yes, it's true. I've been here since day one. Let's see how it going, it's going to continue. It's a whole generation that we have actually gone together. We had a common avenue. It's a long time, but it's also a short time because if we think of how much we still have to do, we have achieved a lot, but we still need to accomplish many things. And again, I'm so happy that so many thing, people come and keep supporting us. Thank you very much. Yes, Hans, 25 years of BioVision, and you've been involved since day one. Tell us how it all started. Yes, well, it started with this film by Andy Schrieber. He did that for a specific institute, and we discussed one night having a good beer, and we expected nice weather for the next time, and I explained to him the way uh, to start a little project and how I did that, and it just didn't work out. I didn't have that much time to deal with the details. I just had a few people employed, and then I again realized it didn't, it didn't work, and we lost lots of money. But you also have to make your own experiences. And Andy told me, no problem. I do know, sorry about this technical interruption here. Yes, I do know how to do it better. You have to have a foundation. And then the projects can actually run over the foundation. Sorry about this. Yes, OK, that's how it was that over the coming months, we talked about that project. And Andy told me, I do know some good people, Jörg and Mattis Zimmermann, a lawyer. This is what you need for a foundation. And Jörg Weber, who had excellent experiences in Africa, and of course, a filmmaker, a very good filmer, knowing about the media. And this is how we started the four men of us. And we founded BioVision 1998. 
but it was actually an experiment upon an experiment that, which didn't work well. Yes, but initially it was just you. And I think the first employees were hired only in 2002. That's a long time, actually. And one of the first projects was the farmer communication program. What's the story behind it? Yes, OK, that's how we then had the foundation. We progressed. We executed a few little projects. And one day, I was the general director of ICIP. And there, a Swiss person came in, slammed the door, and said, this in Swiss German, this whole work is only bullshit and it doesn't do anything. And then I asked, sorry, but who are you? And it was Peter Baumgartner. He was the correspondent for the daily paper Tages Anzeiger for Kenya, for Nairobi. And he also was interested in development issues. And he had supported privately farmers in Kenya. And he told me that they had problems with potatoes. And he told me, well, you have an office full of papers, documents, you do research, but you don't, don't do anything for the farmers. Then I said, well, we have a research institute, not an implementation institute. There are other people doing that. But of course, I knew the problem. And then he said, well, Hans, you come from Switzerland. You know how it works. He said to me in Swiss German. And he told me that what is needed in Africa is also not a, re a scientific research paper, but the organic, organic farmer newspaper with the farmer communication program. And we built a whole system to collect information and to publish the information that we worked at. And every month, we published an English written newspaper, The Organic Farmer. The question is, why in English? Well, the farmer said that, well, that's fine for us. And the young people do also know English. They learn English at school. And they were ready to translate for their parents. And at the same time, they learn something about organic farming and sustainable agriculture. This newspaper is The Organic Farmer. And in the meantime, it's read by many people. One copy was handed out for free so that a group of farmers can read it. And this was also a very good tool to bring the people together to discuss, to exchange, and they could also write back and ask questions. It became a real communication and media tool. That's why we also called our project Farmer Communication Program. It all grew and became big. Now they're active in various countries of Africa. Now there's a publication in Swahili for countries that people are not that fluent in English. And we do hope that we can continue. And we hope that maybe in the future we will have a publication in French and in Portuguese. But of course, we need time to implement that project. But in the meantime, the farmers, it's very important that they can share their information. They can give feedment, feedback, and they can use it to communicate with each other. And as you see, it's really important that they come together. And maybe they can also do politics and work out political and policy tools. You told us that it grew and that you didn't do it by yourself. No, that's true. We cannot do anything by ourselves. And that's why there was another organization. And that's how BioVision grew and grew, became bigger and bigger. And what we also realized was that, of course, we can do lots of things from Zurich, but that's not enough. And that's why we actually founded BioVision Africa Trust in Nairobi in 2009. And that was actually 
a further development of our institution in Switzerland. We wanted to have an institution in Africa for African people supported by Zurich. And this is the organization which is now working with the farmer communication program. They have taken on this program and manage it and of course also other projects. Biovision is also the seat of the African Union, an initiative on organic farming in a sustainable way. And that's very important that this institution by African Union has been accepted and recognized as what it does. And it's also used to promote the message on agroecology from the top to bottom, not only from bottom to the top, like what we heard with Muranga before. More or less at the same time as the Biovision Africa Trust was founded, Biovision also started to work on the political field. How did that start? Well, we did realize that you can do a lot with cooperation, with projects, but it all has its limits if politics don't play with us. And that's why Biovision started to be present at international and national institutions such as the United Nations, but also such as in on the country level and supports the everyday politics so that we can work out and promote sustainable food systems. We do know our own limits, and this is why we need people from various levels of decision-making processes to be able to continue our good work. For example, if we do well from the bottom to up, then we feel the counterwinds of the industry with their huge lobbies, and that's why we have to keep together, be a counterweight, and nevertheless, we have to start working from the top to the bottom and pushing these industrial interests aside. That's how you see we need a lot of in commitment, engagement, people that are eager to deal with those kind of circles of political frameworks and people. That's not everyone's cup of tea, but nevertheless, that's how it is. We feel the lobby as soon as we push in favor of sustainability and good food systems. We saw, nevertheless, there's a lot of organizations that want to go into the right direction. Nevertheless, that's just a small piece of the whole cake. That's why I say we need a lot of work still. I agree with you completely. But something else that amazes me, since the beginning, Biovision's team and the program volume has grown steadily. And I think it was about three years ago when we opened another office in Geneva. How do you see these developments? Well, this question has been asked several times. How big should Biovision become? Maybe at one point in time, we'll be going to be too big. Well, I can answer if we do great work and excellent successes that we can show, we can still continue to grow. And these wonderful free colleagues that are, were there at the beginning are here, and we all couldn't have a, possibly imagined what we have achieved so far. And of course, this is also all very, very enjoyable. We have a wonderful team. And you see how the team is growing from one year to the next. We have lots of young people that think with us, that organize with us, and that's very important. Not only the old people should come up with their ideas, much rather within Biovision, it's very important to learn from the younger people to in order to have a very dynamic organization. So growth on various levels is good, is fine enough. And I think there's lots of room 
to grow, not alone. We keep trying to include partners that are working and going into the same direction as us. And that's why it's so important to look around us to find out who possibly could support our work out there and how we can actually support others with our work. And if we manage to bring together at one table those that are like-minded, I think we can actually become even more green and even bigger than today. This is wonderful to hear. Thank you very much. Well, I would like to know one last thing. What do you wish for the future? More growth. Yes, that's what I really wish. We have to be clear about one thing. This work that we started 25 years ago has not come to an end, by far not. The breakthroughs that we had with your support and also with our dynamic teams that we keep having, it's still long ways to go until we can really have this transformation of the food system completed. Agroecology, I don't know whether you have once checked on the net what it means. There are 13 principles of agroecology over the institution, the social level, and the technical level and the organic level. So this is why we say we need a comprehensive agroecology, including lots of things. And I think now there is an international coalition for agroecology, and BioVision has been the driver for the creation of it and for supporting the secretariat. We have 50 countries and 40 organizations part of that. That means something is really happening. And BioVision is here, try, tries to be the driver, pushes all the time because we need lots of efforts on an international level to make sure that we don't have any backlashes, that we don't fall back. and. If we can support those that we already support and continue in their support and include new forces, then I think we can look forward. And as you said, these inspiring showcases, those beacons of hope for agroecological transformation of our food system, that's our project. Great, that's what we are going to do. Thank you very much, Hans. That has been a wonder, wonderful statement by our Hans Rudolf Herren. Thank you very much. Hans Herren emphasized how important it is to closely collaborate with others. He also mentioned a concrete example, BioVision Africa Trust. This organization for us is something really special. You and us are lucky in that representatives of this organization are here in Zurich and we'll, we'll hear about it firsthand. And I give the floor to our director, Frank Eihorn, and welcome the president of the organization, Anna Onyango, and the director, Dr. David Amuda. Anna Onyango, chair of the board of trustees of BioVision Africa Trust, also known as BIVAT. The chair is the equivalent to the president, so she's the peer of Hans Rudolf Herren. Please, Anna, take a seat here on our garden restaurant wooden chair, so I hope you don't mind. Thank you. Please take a seat. And we have Dr. David Amudavi. David, he is my peer at the level of the executive director 
of Bivat. It's wonderful to have you here. And we have the privilege not only to have them here, but the entire board and the senior management, not only to celebrate with us the 25 years of BioVision, but also to discuss strategic matters. Now, I want to ask a few questions to you so that we can better know where are you coming from. And I start with you, Anna. You have been the Agricultural Secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture in Kenya until 2019. For many years, you had a very high position in the Kenyan government. And then you decided to join the board of an NGO. How comes? Why did you think it was worth joining an organization like BioVision Africa Trust? Thank you very much for that uh, question, Frank. And uh, let me start by greeting all of you. Good afternoon. Um, you asked uh, an interesting question, why I decided to join the board of BioVision Africa Trust. And I want to say that um, the decision was sort of taken out of my hand because uh, we had collaborated for a number of years um, with BioVision uh, Africa Trust through the executive director who is um, sitting here with us. And uh, because of the long collaboration that we had, uh, when I retired, they felt that I still had some value that I could add to the work of BioVision Africa Trust. And um, when they called me up, I did accept because their thinking was very much aligned to our, many of our policy um, decisions about food security and nutrition within the food systems of our country and in the region at large. I know many of you know that Kenya is a key player in the region in terms of agriculture and a key player in the East African community and also in the uh, common market for East and Southern Africa activities, agricultural activities. So I felt that it merged with my vision of continuing to work in the agriculture sector to improve the livelihoods of people. And of course, when uh, Faith was talking here, I felt a lot of nostalgia because Muranga was my very first station of posting after I graduated from the university. And I stayed in Muranga for seven years. And I know the farmers, they are very hardworking and, they, and very resilient. Muranga is a very diverse county. So um, from 2019, when I was called up to join the board of BioVision up to now, uh, I have been working with them. I've seen a lot of growth. And of course, you want to be with a winning organization. Everybody likes to be a winner. And so I was very happy to join and uh, be able to participate actively in their discussions and their decisions about agroecology which to me is really the future of agriculture and how we utilize the resources that are available to us. And of course, particularly because they are not only in Kenya, but they're in the region and they're growing within the continent in terms of recognition. So for a winning organization, who wouldn't want to be with them? So, and halfway along last year, I became the chair of the board when, and took over from Andy. So we are a winning team. Thank you, Frank. So it seems... <laughs> Beautiful. And by the way, very happy to have Andy Schrieber here. He is still on the board of BioVision Africa Trust. But it seems... It, didn't, well, it wasn't very difficult for them to convince you to join the board, to bring you on board in the true sense of the word? You didn't have to think twice, huh? No, I didn't have to think twice because their goals and objectives aligned with mine uh, personally and also the overall goals and objectives of our country. So 
It Good was match. natural for me to Great. want to join that. Um, David, you convinced her, but you also brought the organization to the level where it is today. From the very beginning, you have been leading it. What does this partnership with BioVision mean to you and to the organization? Thank you very much, uh, Frank. For me, I have great pride in this organization. And I want to say, if it were not for the founder, BioVision Foundation, BioVision Africa Trust will not be there. And one of the biggest programs for our farmers in our country, the Farmer Communication Program, it has taken the level it has, influencing the lives of farmers, now over three million of them, courtesy of BioVision Foundation. And I say it was a noble idea for the founders to think of establishing an African organization to support our own governments in the provision of extension services to the farmers. So I am proud to see what we have achieved in our farmer communication program. And I'm also proud to see some of the important programs that have taken root not only in East Africa, but the rest of Africa because of what we believe in, in transforming our agriculture and food systems. With a vision of ensuring that we have an African continent that is food secure, with people living in a healthy environment. How did you manage to reach three million people? That sounds amazing. Sure. As I mentioned earlier, the Pharma Communication Program is one that is unique by itself. We reach farmers across the whole country with our The Organic Pharma Radio Program. Uh, Dr. Hans Heren mentioned about uh, TOF Radio. That is an important program where farmers share information about the achievements, the learnings they're making in the organic sector. As mentioned also earlier, through the Organic Pharma Magazine, it has become the voice for the farmers to learn and also share the experiences. And we get the papers reaching almost all the 47 counties of our country. And more importantly, we are able to work with some farmers on face-to-face -face in 11 out of 47 counties in our country. And remember, our population is slightly over 50 million. So 3 million is still a very small number. So we have a lot of work to do. But it's quite encouraging and impressive with what we are doing with the support of our founder organization, BioVision Foundation. We work very, very closely. We are on the ground, and they always keep us on our toes so that we can reach as many farmers as possible in Kenya, in Tanzania, and there are other African farmers who are also benefiting from the information we have, even through our infinite, a huge, useful database of information on crops, on livestock, on environment, and we've been able to reach many farmers in that way without really having to go uh, to those countries. So, so we would want to achieve much more, and we believe we are on the right track. Impressive achievements, Anna. I think that deserves Thank an applause. You. Thank you. Impressive achievements. A lot of people reached, but still a majority is in conventional agriculture. From your perspective, is the work, what Pivot has done, what they have achieved, still like a drop in the ocean? Or have they really been able to influence the whole agricultural sector and even the agricultural policies in the country? I do believe that um, three million may look like a drop in the ocean when you think of the entire population of smallholder farmers, which we say is about 60% of uh, smallholders who are active in agriculture, of the whole population. But to me, it isn't a drop in the ocean because um, there is um, a ripple effect in the population. And uh, more and more, beavers are being called to come and be involved in the day-to-day decision-making and policy-making activities and policy implementation. 
um, in, the, in the country. And also, um, there's more outreach even in the region. The other day, they were in Madagascar. Another time, they're in Tanzania, they're in West Africa. They have so many hubs now that um, you can't say that it's just the three million people in the country who are being reached. There's definitely been a ripple effect and a lot of awareness creation among the policy makers in the, in the country. Of course, with our new um, relatively young governance system of, of devolution, the counties now, as, as uh, Faith rightfully said, are also becoming more involved and actually calling them out. The other day he was out in Kakamega uh, County, um, also liaising with the county administration to be able to talk about what exactly Biovision Africa Trust does and uh, trying to engage more with the counties now in terms of uh, disseminating the information. So I believe three million, if you look at three million and count six people around each of the three million, uh, that's a very big number because each household has an average of six people. And if they all go out and um, farmer to farmer reach, the, the so, information will reach a wider So you're population. optimistic that in the future there's more awareness created, more yes. counties will join, yes. more countries also where activities mm. are taking place. Brings Definitely. me back to David. Mm -hmm. I mean, Biva, today you are one of the key drivers of agroecological and ecological organic agriculture in the whole region. Um, what is the biggest achievement? What are you most proud of what you have achieved so far? Sure. Thank you, Frank. Uh, friends, I want to say uh, Biovision Africa Trust has become the organization that is associated with agroecology, transforming our agricultural systems to the extent that it has been recognized by the African Union for all the 55 countries of Africa. That this is the organization that can hold the secretariat, the seat for providing governance on the African Union Continental Initiative that we call Ecological Organic Agriculture. So it is with pride, I would say, that for us to be in that position and uh, to be recognized as such, and having signed an MOU with the African Union for us to host the Secretariat for this Continental Initiative, which again, I'm very happy to say, it is supported by the Swiss government through the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, and together with Biovision Foundation, who have also been supporting us to take on this responsibility, it is a huge milestone. We have also become quite influential in supporting various partners that we work with in 10 countries in Africa, influencing their policies, influencing their strategies, and some of the ones that also Biovision Foundation is supporting. And for here, we really need change, and we feel we are very, very proud indeed. And another major issue or aspect that I'm very proud of is that our organization has become the lead organization among the five knowledge hubs in Africa, supported by the German government through GRZ. We are leading the Eastern Africa Knowledge Hub for five countries, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, and Madagascar. And I'm very happy to say um, that we have been rated among the best actual knowledge hub of all the five covering the whole of Africa. So for me, I'm very proud of these uh, big achievements, which have gone beyond Kenya. And for sure, we are living to the true spirit of the name of the organization, Biovision Africa Trust. So we've become a really pan-African organization, working with governments, as you've seen, being recognized in the area of policy influence, and also promoting and supporting the growth of sustainable agriculture. And now, as we know it today, transforming our food systems. So I'm very so proud. I can see activity. that, and I think you have good reason to be proud, the whole board, sure. your whole team. So I sure. think that deserves a big applause also. Sure, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. But David, having achieved so much, I mean, mission accomplished, what are your future plans? 
mission not yet accomplished. <laughs> we are still working on the journey. We would like our organization to become a true catalyst of change in genuine food systems transformation. We want to become a center of excellence, and if possible, to be the referred center of excellence in agroecology within Africa, recognized by all the 55 member states. We'd also like to continue to document the evidence that agroecology works. We can have better, healthy environments. We can ensure our people are food secure and in a healthy way, reduce diseases that are associated with chemical-based agriculture. And that is something that I feel we, hit, we really have a lot to do. And more importantly, we would like to ensure that the farmer-to-farmer -farmer learning, peer learning, becomes the key catalyst of ensuring that we reach many more farmers, not only in Kenya, in East Africa, but also across the continent. And again, we want to demonstrate that agroecology-based agriculture can contribute to the economic development of our countries. And that's why we'd like to strengthen more the aspect of markets development. We want to ensure that our markets are recognized for agricultural products and also work with other organizations, including the FAO organization, in coming up with standards. We are very clear on the principles, but the standards is an area that we'd like to see. So that when people go to the markets, they wish to see agroecological products, organic products, with very clear marks. And this is one area that I really feel we have the future, we have the work cut out for us, and with the support of our strategic partner and founder, Biovision Foundation, I am very convinced that the sky is the limit, mm -hmm. and you are going to be part of that phenomenal growth. Wow. Thank you. The sky is the limit. Anna, it sounds like this guy has a plan and he has ambition, isn't it? <laughs> yes, indeed. We just turned 25 years. Mm -hmm. um, what do you wish by a vision on our anniversary for our future? What do you, wish, do you think we should do in the future? Thank you, Frank. Um, I do believe there are still many frontiers that we need to break, many barriers that we need to break. And I believe that BioVision Foundation has broken some of those frontiers within the last 25 years and has grown to be a global uh, organization capable of taking on um, governments. And uh, if I look to the next 25 years without losing our vision, because the founders of BioVision were very visionary, <laughs> if I can uh, play with the words, because vision was there because of seeing very far into the future and seeing, um, thinking about how our planet will look if activities continued the way they, they have been doing in the conventional type of agriculture. Mm. And without creating um, unnecessary panic or fear, I see that the, in the next 25 years, the frontiers within the agroecology are really um, within our reach. And I believe it is possible that we can be able to make a change in the way agriculture is practiced and bring more people, more champions to uh, join with the BioVision Foundation to be able to have a better world uh, for our, our future generations. One frontier that I, I will really want to ask to think about, and which has been mentioned here severally, is about the youth, the young people. How can we involve them in the different... Uh, aspects of agroecology, because it's a very big uh, area, um, and we need to be able to involve them in, in uh, really thinking about the world and how they would want the world they will live in will look like once uh, some of us 
are gone because it's very dynamic. We are moving in, we are moving out. And so we need more responsibility, more care, more attention to these young people so that um, they know what it means when they um, uh, do certain activities that affect the environment and affect the food systems in general. There's a, a lot of dynamism in systems, and so we need to be able to harness that energy that they have, be it in IT, be it in uh, uh, hands-on work in agriculture, be it in business, agribusiness. How can agribusiness be brought together with agroecology? How can marketing be brought under the umbrella of ecology, even if at the end of the day, they want to make more money, but how can they do that responsibly? So I do believe that in the next 25 years, these barriers will have been broken. Well, these are words of wisdom, Anna, and there seems to be a lot to be done still for BioVision Foundation also. I look very much forward to continuing our fruitful collaboration also in future. And I thank you so much for being with us here today, but also in the future. A big applause for Anna Onyango and Dr. David Amudavi. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, my brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 David. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Liebe Freunde, ich sage es jetzt einfach so ganz spontan. Friends, Sie haben heute You got some insight into how we at BioVision work, how we work with our partners, how we try to move something for the future. And this is what we want to do in the future as well. And we have achieved many things, but we need to do many other things. And we thought a lot about our strategy. And actually, I'm so happy that we aligned it quite well with what Anna and Yango just told us, where are the major challenges where we have to work at. In the future, we are going to work in those themes that you already know, and we use five different leverages. We would like to continue to develop agroecological methods with research together with the farmers, with the field, to have good future-able uh, systems to generate systems that are long-term, but also to spread them, that more and more farmers can use them and use the knowledge, what we know, to use the experience from research to field or from you know university to the farmers. And another level that was also mentioned today is the connection of the producer with the market because it's nothing that you produce ecologically, organically, but you cannot sell the product production at the market. This is why we try to bring together the farmers with the market and also with the distribution channels. And the fourth important leverage is strengthening the civil society organization, sensitization of consumers in society, that these are very important issues. The way we produce food, the way we consume food are extremely important for our future, that they are aware for these issues and that they commit themselves for sustainable framework conditions, not only in Switzerland, but also in sub-Sahara countries with our partners. And that leads to the fifth leverage. These framework conditions 
We heard it today from Kenya and Ethiopia that these framework conditions allow and support transformation in the first place and that they can actually thrive. It's a comprehensive approach. I think that's exactly what the BioVision approach is today, but also in the future. And we thought, how can we explain it in an easier way? You know, comprehensiveness is also always very complex. Maybe you recognize a few things here. And we have tried to illustrate it in a new way in order to have a better way of communication with people and outreach to the society. And this is why we produce. Our globalized world faces great challenges. Climate change, biodiversity loss, social inequality and health problems. Our food system or how we produce process and consume our food plays a decisive role. This is why BioVision advocates for a food system fit for the future for everybody. We want enough healthy food for everyone that is produced, processed and consumed in environmentally and socially responsible ways. To pursue that, we strive for a fundamental agroecological transformation of the food system. Through strong partnerships in sub-Saharan Africa, awareness-raising activities in Switzerland and international policy dialogue. Concretely, we address five related points of leverage. One, we develop agroecological production systems. Together with partners from science and agriculture, we develop practical ecological solutions in sub-Saharan Africa that are tailored to local needs and markets. By further developing natural farming methods, for example, for fruits and vegetables, we improve the nutrition, income and health of the local population. Two, we disseminate knowledge. Various media and courses offer farmers, extension workers and students access to new and proven knowledge about sustainable farming methods and agroecology. Many of them multiply their knowledge as they pass it on to others. Three, we promote agroecological enterprises and markets. We connect women producers with consumers in local markets. To do so, we support small and medium-sized agroecological enterprises in connecting to markets and accessing capital. Women and young people in particular profit from new income opportunities while increasing the local food supply. Four, we strengthen engagement with civil society. We promote awareness among the population, especially among youth, of sustainable behaviours and ecological and social interrelationships in the food system. In Kenya and Uganda, we support consumer organisations in making their voices heard. In Switzerland, school classes learn about and better understand the environmental and social impacts of their purchases. Five, we create political framework conditions for agroecology. We support policymakers in creating framework conditions for an agroecological food system. These include incentives for sustainable and socially fair production, as well as investments in research, education and extension services. These efforts act as seeds to transform the landscape of our food system. Once they thrive, they will help overcome malnutrition, poverty, climate change and biodiversity loss. But we can't do this alone. We need many partners to achieve these goals. We support them in playing their roles well, trying out new options and networking with others. And we need your help. Join us through your consumer behavior, your vote, and by winning others over to agroecological causes. And last but not least, by supporting BioVision's work. Together we can make our food system fit for the future.
Dem Applaus nach entnehme ich, es ist gelungen. As I can hear and I can see, we achieved. And thank you for the communication team. Great work. As you can see, we still have long ways to go and we'll keep at it. I'm delighted that you have come this far with us because without your support, we could not exist. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the entire BioVision team, I would like to thank you most sincerely. We hope that you will continue to support us in the future. And a big thank to you, our Board of Trustees, for their wise management. We would nothing be able to do. So thank you very much to all members of the Board of Trustees, as they are responsible for our strategy. These, here they are. Shutipate, these are now the names. Without them, we would not be there where we are today. And without you, Hans, without you, we would not be here celebrating 25 years. And thank you for your far-sighted leadership and support. This is your applause. Und ich übergebe an meine Kollegin Sharon. Vielen lieben Dank. And this goes to my colleague Sharon. Thank you very much, Frank, for this exciting look into the future. I realize I'm really looking forward to what's coming. And of course, I'm so happy that you accepted, dear audience, our invitation to be at table with BioVision to find out more about our recipes for the future and to celebrate 25 years of BioVision together with us. I would like to thank all those that make it possible that we come together. And that means all the members, the team members of BioVision helped also those people that are just having a baby they came and old biovision team members so that's great to have support from the outside and i would also like to mention the catering partner samses it's the restaurant samses so thank you very much for them Ornella and their team not only cooked, they also helped us to framework the whole procedures and a lot of other people supported us as well. The interpreters, the technical people, pictures, sound and everything. So thank you to them. And finally, before I say farewell to you, we actually owe you a fourth course. And in a few minutes, it's going to be served. Enjoy panna cotta with saved apples and rescued apples. And stay with us at the table for as long as you like. Thank you very much for being here with us. Stay at it, as I said, lots of inspiration. And I think we're going to meet again October 26, 2024, again here in the Zurich Volkshaus. Now, thank you very much and enjoy the fourth course. Bye-bye. <laughs>